Hello, good morning in London. Good afternoon, I think. It is my pleasure to introduce Professor Basa Isakanin. Uh, he is a senior lecturer at Brunel uh, London University. Uh, para los españoles, a senior lecturer is el equivalente a catedrático. I mean, senior lecturer is the equivalent in Spanish to the full professor. And this is uh, your first uh, virtual visit to our CEO college, but we hope it is not the last. And that sooner rather than later, you can come and spend a few days with that and get to know our university. Uh, he has published, Professor Hassani has published a large number of papers in different branches of operation research, such as supply chain management, game theory, decentralized scheduling, mechanism design. And his talk today can be framed within we call operation research games in honor of professor expertise from the center in the university specifically he is going to present us a model of cooperation in transport and logistics i hope all of you enjoy i learn a lot with it and i give the floor to professor thank you very much anna um well it's a pleasure Definitely to, to give this presentation today. Uh, when Anna and I uh, were planning this presentation, it's supposed to be face to face. So I was supposed to come to Spain to you, but um, well, we have to do it this way now, uh, which, is, uh, which is a little bit disappointing, but I definitely look forward to uh, come visit you and Anna and Spain, uh, hopefully in near future. For now, everybody needs to stay put in their places. Um, so my presentation today is about uh, urban consolidation centers uh, and basically some cooperative games in logistics sector. Uh, but I wanted to give you again uh, a brief introduction. Uh, my name is Bezat, uh, Bezat Hezarkani. Uh, I'm a senior lecturer at uh, Brunel Business School. Uh, you can see my email address. So uh, if you uh, want to ask me a question later on, I mean, obviously we have time after the presentation for question and answer. But if you want to uh, uh, connect with me, we can use my email address. I'm happy to uh, discuss things about the presentation today with you or other ideas of research. Um, the talk for today is about uh, my, one of my recent papers, which we did with uh, Marco Slicker and Tom Van Wunsel uh, from uh, Technical University of Eindhoven. And it's about uh, gain sharing in urban consolidation centers. So essentially it's an application of um, cooperative games in logistics and transportation. Uh, the paper is available, it's open access, so uh, you, can, you can have a look at it uh, for more details. <clears throat> I'm going to be starting with a little bit of introduction and uh, talking about the literature review. And uh, I'm going to talk more specifically about the model and the situations that we have. And then we move to the definition of the cooperative game. So we consider the game in specifically two settings, we, uh, when the capacities are not a problem and where the capacities are uh, restrictive. And we, we talk about the core and some other concepts uh, related to the core before concluding. Um, I think the questions, uh, as Sixto mentions, need to be uh, kept for the end. But if, it's, if there is uh, something, I think if you unmute and say something, asking a question, I would be able to answer because I don't see your faces. So if you have a question, uh, it's a little bit difficult to, for me to understand that you have a question. But anyways. Um, well, I think you've seen this picture before. This is about how much uh, vehicles, how many vehicles do we need for transporting people? 
right? So the, the idea is if we use cars and we put people inside their own cars, we're gonna be needing this many cars, yeah? And if we wanna use bicycles, we would need, well, same amount, but it would take a lot less space. Uh, and But we can put everybody in one bus. So from the point of view of congestion, from the point of view of CO2 and environmental issues, it would make a lot of sense to consolidate travels. Now, this is a picture before the pandemic. You're not gonna be seeing this picture for a while now because we definitely don't wanna put that many people in, in one bus because with the, with the social distancing rules and all the problems that we have at the moment, there is not much of a justification for being efficient in terms of uh, transporting people. So probably the picture in the near future is everybody using their own cars because that's the safest thing. But in terms of freight, in terms of transporting goods, we still can have justification for uh, using a consolidated form of delivery. So if you think that this people are boxes of goods, and now we still can use uh, one single truck or few trucks and you know, individual deliveries to put everything together. And, and, and the research that I'm gonna be talking about today is basically about uh, increasing the efficiency of delivering goods using a consolidation center. So what is, why, why do we, even bother to do this because in Europe, um, more than 20% of all movements of trucks are actually empty trucks. So if you, next time that you go to a highway, to a motorway, and you see lorries and trucks are traveling, you know, one of every five is absolutely empty. And it doesn't mean that the other four that you see on the road are full. There might be a one, one pallet, two pallets, three pallets, who knows? They're not full, but at least they're not completely empty. So it, this just shows how inefficient the road transportation at the moment is in Europe, where we spend a lot of time and effort on increasing efficiency, on reducing uh, CO2 emissions, all those all sort of things, still very inefficient. Now, so what are the consolidation centers? Well, the idea is that, well, if we have uh, several trucks traveling to a city center, like uh, uh, London, so it's a very congested city, and there's a lot of retail and shops inside London where uh, trucks need to service. Um, but you know, if you consider that everybody wants to go into the city center, so there are even more congested places in the, in, 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 in the center of London. So just, for example, Oxford Street is a famous retail um, hotspot, which is, very also congested, so it's in the heart of London. Uh, if the trucks want to go and deliver to all the shops which are on, on that uh, location, well, it would take many, many trucks, many, many trips, and with it comes congestion and, uh, and, uh, and CO2 and, and a carbon footprint. So the idea is why not create something, a facility uh, outside London, or outside a big city, because it's happening in a, a lot of places, in a lot of uh, cities. So why not create a facility outside the big city and ask people who want to go and deliver inside the city to deliver to that facility? So instead of going to the city center, they go to that facility and they unload their cargo, which is most of the time less than a full truck, and then, from that facility, we can use one single truck or a uh, few trucks, but with high uh, utilization, 
almost full to deliver the things to the city center. Now, if we do that, not only we increase the efficiency of uh, how much uh, cargo we ca carry with a car, with a truck, we can also use a different devices, which are with, with different vehicles, which are more suited for urban uh, environment. For example, we can use uh, electric trucks. So in theory, there is a lot of benefits coming from using a facility which is dedicated to combine the cargoes of different carriers. There's a lot of potential in that. So there are a lot of governments, a lot of local authorities are investing in these things. You know, they fund uh, some uh, people who is gonna be responsible for this and they go and create a facility and they get money from the authorities to run this thing. So, so they promote coming to the consolidation center instead of going to the city center. And you know, trucks can use use that. We have a lot of we have so many of these examples in Europe, uh, across Europe. Uh, so uh, we have a lot of them. But the problem is, these things, these facilities, not very successful. So a report in 2011 uh, shows that more than half of the 100 initiatives to create uh, urban consolidation centers fail. And the problem is that once the local authority, once the government stops funding this facility, the, the, the UCC, Urban Consolidation Center, well, they, they can't sustain themselves financially, so they go bust, they go bankrupt, uh, they cannot uh, survive, they cannot cover their costs. So um, here we, here's the place where we as researchers in game theory comes in. So we want to come up with a way that we can make consolidation centers sustainable in their operations. So we want to make sure that we have a mechanism in place uh, where we share the costs of the consolidation centers among its users in such a way that each user is uh, happy. I mean, they make profit out of using the consolidation center. And as, as a whole, we can cover all the costs of a consolidation center. So that would result in a sustainable uh, mechanism for managing the consolidation center. So that's that's the rationale. We want to make consolidation centers working because they are good for the logistics. Okay, so the idea is, for example, we have uh, some trucks that are just, they are delivering goods from local warehouses or uh, production uh, centers. They wanna go all to the city centers, the common location, yeah? And they can go either directly to the city center or they can use this house here, which represents the uh, consolidation center. So they can come to the consolidation center and uh, com combine their cargo. They unload their uh, cargo from their own trucks and then there's gonna be a truck traveling from the consolidation center to, to the city. And on this car, on this truck, there is the cargo for uh, here. This player one and this player two, and 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 and, and people can choose for themselves. They can uh, they can think and say, okay, I'm gonna have this cargo and I'm I'm gonna go to the city center. Does it make sense for me to go to the consolidation center or not? It's not for everybody. Somebody may already have. Uh, almost full truck of delivery. So they are a big chain and they want to deliver to uh, five, six shops, 10 shops in, in the same location. So they, they, it doesn't necessarily have to work for everybody. So for example, in this example, this player three is going directly to the city center, although it has the option to use the consolidation center, but it, ha it, it can, do otherwise you can do uh, uh, individual delivery so that, that so that's the that's the thing we have we want to create something outside this outside a congested area and ask everybody to use it 
and people are free to to use it or not. I, but but if it, we should make it reasonable for a lot of players to join in and use it because that I mean, that's what we wanna what wanna see. We wanna see we wanna have less congestion and less uh, foot, carbon footprint. Uh, the thing is that well, if they want to go to the city center, they obviously if they go to the uh, to the consolidation center, instead of two truck trips to the center, they would use one truck trip. Yeah, but there is a catch. If they go there, they might have to wait for others to join in. So if this player two is arriving at the consolidation center at nine o'clock and this player one arrives at consolidation center in the afternoon, say two o'clock, then a consolidated truck cannot leave until two o'clock in the afternoon. And the, the one that comes in the morning may does not want to, may not want to wait that long for, for the delivery. So we have the waiting here. If we are going to combine our cargo, then we might have to wait for each other to uh, to arrive at the at the consolidation center. So that's the uh, uh, that's the, the negative part of using a consolidation center. Although we are uh, benefiting from reducing the number of trips, uh, we might have to wait, and not everybody wants to wait, you know. But but some people may have deliveries which are not that time sensitive, so they willing to wait and not all the trucks may come at, uh, at a distance time period so they may arrive uh, close to each other. You can see better how um, the uh, operations of consolidation center uh, are in this example. So we have two trucks here, the truck for the player one and the truck for player two and these guys come to the consolidation center. So the, the, the cargo of consolidation center comes, at the, 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 the cargo of player one arrives at consolidation center in this example, say eight o'clock in the morning, okay? The other guy arrives at consolidation center at nine o'clock in the morning, yeah? So if they want to put their uh, cargo in one truck and dispatch it from the consolidation center, the first one, has to wait, I mean, the cargo of the first one, has to wait for an hour and until the player two arrives. And once it's there, they can immediately dispatch a cargo and, you know, uh, head head towards the towards the city center. So um, that's, that's the thing. And from the uh, cost sharing point of view or game sharing point of view, we want to know in these circumstances, how much of the benefits accrued by using the consolidation center goes to player two and how much saving goes to player one? The other side of that question would be how much of the cost is paid by player one and how much of the cost is paid by player two? So cost sharing and gain sharing are always uh, two sides of the same coin. So if we answer one, we are answering the other one as well. Now, Let's focus on the uh, cost sharing uh, problem. So we have three trucks, right? Here's an example. Um, we have three trucks and each truck has half a truck cargo. Now they want to arrive, they want to uh, drive, they want to deliver to the city. And because they have, they're half full, they can go to the consolidation center and create full trucks in ter in ter in, instead of half full trucks. The thing is that we have capacity for two half trucks in one full truck, right? So it's only two of these players who can actually work together. So either player one and two can combine their cargo or it can be player two or three. So we, we, we can't ask three of them to combine their cargos. Because if you want to combine their cargos, there will gotta be two trucks anyways. And if somebody's going on one truck, half full, they can just do it directly without going to the consolidation center. Now, we have a choice to, uh, to choose 
which one of these trucks will be selected to go to the consolidation center. And by the way, suppose first player and third player are arriving too far from each other where we can't really uh, beneficially combine their car going to one truck. So they, they have to wait for a long time. Uh, it doesn't make sense for them. So it's gonna be either one and two or two and three. Now, suppose if we combine their cargo, we get 60 units of saving. So how do we share these 60 units between the players? Now, if we take the uh, definition of core and the uh, stable allocations, um, I, I think most of you are familiar with, uh, with, this, uh, with this concept. But if we take the stable allocation, there's going to be only one stable allocation in this case, and that would be to give all the profits to player number two. Give nothing to player one, nothing to player three, everything goes to player two. That's how, if we, if we follow the, the, the rationale of stable allocations and core, that's how do we share the profits. But let's change things a bit. Now suppose the player one and three are not arriving that far uh, from each other. So they can actually combine their cargos as well. So player one and two can co combine and get 60 units of benefits. Player two and three can combine and get 60 units of benefits. Player one and three also can combine their cargo and get gain 60 units of benefits. But so just gonna be only a pair of them because we have three half trucks, fulls, and we can uh, actually use two of them to make a full truck. Now again, if it's, uh, suppose we are choosing eventually player one and two to come and do the consolidation at uh, UCC. Now, if you again follow the uh, rationale of core and the stable allocations, there is no way we can share this 60 unit of savings among the players such that they are happy with the, with the, with, in the sense that they get something and they can't say, okay, I'm gonna be doing this with the other guy, I'm gonna get more. There's no way we can that because we can do that because the core is empty in this case. So we have some problems here. The problems with sharing allocations, uh, which is the emptiness of the core, and also the situation where we have two players working together, combining their cargo, but one of them gets nothing and the other one gets everything. So they may not consider this to be fair. And if we if we want to approach practitioners, pra practitioners, if we want to approach uh, logistic companies and truck drivers and you know try to uh, justify this kind of allocation for them, they may not like it. So we have to think about a more kind of practical ways that is also uh, reasonable for people who are uh, actually doing this. In terms of the uh, literature review, well, if we only look at the problems of uh, problems in consolidation centers, we still see um, some good amount of previous research on that. So we, in terms of optimization of consolidation centers, we have uh, some work which try to optimize when the trucks come, who should co uh, combine with whom, how much they wait. And you know, we can use all sorts of sophisticated um, optimization uh, mechanisms, uh, optimization methods to uh, to solve this problem. So an example is the uh, haste bike. Uh, it's all in 2017. The paper is in Transportation Science, and they you know they have a very complicated optimization problem, and they use dynamic pra programming to approximate the uh, solution. But the problem is that eventually, it's going to be multiple companies who who are doing this. It's not going to be one company who wants to use the consolidation center. Because if there's only one company, they can do the consolidation at their own facilities. So consolidation centers are, in a sense, a, a decentralized concept, which are going to be used by many different players. So we have to look at this problem from the uh, game theoretic point of view. And if you look at the ap applications of 
cooperative games in logistics well there is a there is a, a good body of literature on different types of games in logistics uh, some of them are more uh, well nicer than the other one in terms of the uh, opportunity to find core allocations in uh, many logistic games we we're gonna lose this concept of core and stable allocation. You know, traveling salesman, for example, is the is the backbone of all the uh, logistic problems, and the core of a uh, traveling salesman is, we know, is empty. So that's the problem you're facing. Okay. Um, assuming everything is clear. Um, I hope it's not too late for asking questions if you wait until the end of it, but uh, I'm going to go now into the model. So we want to model the situation. We're going to create a game and we want to analyze the allocation problem. So we have a set of players, right? We have N, a set of player, and each one of them have a cargo size. So they have one truck, one pallet, or two pallets, two. Uh, boxes you know ci represents the cargo size of player i and they have a ready time when is the earliest time that they can arrive to ucc's urban consolidation center and we index them such that they are um, ordered by the by their arri arrival time so player one is the is the one that can arrive at uh, ucc the earliest now we have a parameter ki which um, in itself uh, hides a lot of things it is the player's potential for gaining uh, benefits from the consolidation center so what is the maximum amount of saving that a player can get by using the consolidation center that would be if the player arrives to the consolidation center yeah, it has to pay a cost for the transportation to consolidation center. And doesn't wait at all, so there's no additional waiting cost, and is dispatched to its location without any additional costs. So it doesn't pay anything towards the cost of transportation from the consolidation center. That's the maximum amount of saving that a player gets. The player doesn't wait and doesn't contribute to the cost of delivery from UCC. So we, we say that is the player's potential. Now, because the players arrive from different places, coming from different locations, uh, they they have different potential. Yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's the upper bound of how much profit they can get. So we, we define that for every player. The next part is the waiting cost. So if player I waits at consolidation center for say an hour, then it would be incurred PI euros or dollars or pounds. Uh, and this P is different for different players because they have different players have different urgency. So, so for some players, time is not that of a, that of big issue. So they can wait two hours or three hours or five hours. It's fine. You know, they just as as long as they deliver through their uh, branch in the city center within that day it's fine but for some players it's more crucial so some players have to be there you know very quickly so for them the this p is much higher so they, they value time uh, much higher than the others so suppose that we have one player arriving at the consolidation center and at, it, it arrives at time ri because that's the ready time of i and is dispatched at some point in time after it arrives so how much benefit it would get well we have the maximum potential of the player which is ki so we just subtract the waiting cost yeah how much does the player wait d is di minus ri so we have that one on pi which is the penalty for the players. And so that would be how much uh, gain the player can get. Okay, we have two other things. One is that we have the trucks that are 
used by the consolidation center. So consolidation center has a fleet of trucks itself. So players come uh, to the consolidation center, unload and go. They go to do their other deliveries. The consolidation center operates a fleet of trucks on its own. So we have a capacity of a truck, which is C, and we have a cost of dispatching a truck from a UCC, which is W. It's, uh, these two features are primaries of the consolidation center. Um, now we can define the delivery situation with the set of players with the vector of uh, capacities, with the vector of ready times, potentials, penalties, and uh, capacities, and the cost of dispatch. So the bold notation is for the vectors. So we just, this is everything that we need to define a delivery consolidation situation. Okay, now we need to think about dispatch times. So the consolidation center, well, remember it tries to optimize the dispatch because we want to reduce the number of trucks dispatched. At the same time, we don't want people to wait for a long time. So the, U the, the UCC needs to decide which trucks it puts in which uh, consolidated uh, groups and when it would, they would be dispatched. So if, it's, if you take a subgroup of players, say T, then the consolidation center needs to determine at what time we need to dispatch this T. First of all, this T, in order to be feasible, has to be later than the ready time of all its members. So that's reasonable, right? And also the, the, the sum of the cargo sizes of the players in T must be less than or equal to the capacity of a truck. So these are the two uh, conditions for feasibility that we have. And then we can define uh, all, the, all the feasible subset of players that fit into one truck. So we have to define the capacity feasible uh, set of trucks with this notion of and uh, and f and all the all the so if the if a group of players there's some of their cargo sizes are more than the capacity of a truck we we, we don't not going to consider that okay it's already infeasible and we want to know how much benefit in total we can create with um, consolidating the cargo of uh, a set of players so it would be the sum of their indi individual savings, which is Ki minus their waiting cost. So that would be how much they can gain, uh, they can be benefit. We, we also need to subtract the, uh, the cost of a truck that is dispatched from the consolidation center. So this notation that we have is the total saving obtained by a group of trucks in T if they are dispatched as at time dt. The next question is that when should we dispatch them? Well, it's intuitive uh, that we need this dt needs to be um, the, the, as small as possible because we don't want them to wait. Waiting is costly. So we want this dt to be as soon as possible. And the earliest time that we can dispatch T is actually the, 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 the time that the last truck in T arrives. Yeah? So DT can be the arrival time of the last player in T. And if we do that, uh, we can then uh, define this U of T, which is the maximum saving that can be obtained by consolidating a group of trucks in T. So here ET is the um, arriving time of latest arriving truck in T. Yeah, so it can be, for example, if it's truck J who's coming the latest, then ET is the ready time of uh, truck J. So now for every group of uh, trucks, we defined this utility function or payoff function. 
saving function. And based on that, we can formulate our uh, optimization problem. This is, as you can see, is a, is a, a packing problem. So we have n, and we want to use subset of n, uh, and we want to make sure that each player is at least at most in one group. And we want to maximize the so total saving that is obtained by this uh, by this packet. So if this uh, uh, if this inequality is in fact equality, then that would we would have a partitioning problem, right? So we have we want to partition the trucks into uh, into different groups of trucks which are consolidated and dispatched individually from the uh, consolidation center. But because we allow for some trucks to go on their own and we don't we don't want to force everybody to come to cons consolidation center so we formulate it as a packing problem and this is a uh, integer optimization problem as you as you know and uh, it's very standard formulation for the for the problem and uh, so once we, we we can solve this we end up with a set of um, set of uh, trucks which uh, for which this their zt is one so that they, they would be the components of an optimal uh, optimal solution so we just this uh, set of capital z n uh, includes all the uh, group of trucks that are dispatched together in an optimization uh, in an optimal solution, so we call which we call each one of them a component of this optimal solution. Okay, so an example: we have three trucks. They have a cargo size of one. Um, they they arrive at time one, two, and three, and maximum uh, profit that they can get is ten. All of them. If they wait, any every unit of time waiting in the consolidation center has a, a penalty of one, and we have the cost of dispatch equal to uh, equal to four, right? So if a one truck goes, so that, that we are we are trying to calculate the value of every coalition, every uh, subgroup of subgroup of players. So if only one player arrives at the consolidation center and goes on its own, where well, it would be the ten which is its potential minus this cost of dispatch, which is four. But if player one and two come together, well, they together they can at most benefit 20. And, but they, if, they, if, if they, they put them on the one truck, they have to pay four. So this would be 20 minus four, which is 16. But because player uh, two, player one has to wait for an hour a unit of time for the other one to arrive there would be a minus one penalty penalty so they get 50. so in total this is, uh, three of them together can gain 23. okay now before we try to go into the game we need to have more insights about how this optimization problem works that's the only way we can actually deal with the cost sharing uh, problem later on we need to have some basic observation about this optimization problem. So we define this lambda for every pair of trucks. And this lambda gives us the benefit that uh, a player I can get if the, it is dispatched with a player J, which arrives later. And so the, basically, these things look uh, a bit uh, Tricky, but they're implement. They're they're um, what they mean is not too complicated. First of all, if you have an optimal solution, then the benefit that each uh, truck is getting in that in 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 its dispatch in the optimal uh, optimal solution is positive. If it's negative, we can just simply ask them to go and deliver on their own. And also that the amount of waiting cost of earlier arriving jobs must be 
less than the benefits that they can get from adding more trucks later coming to the group. Uh, otherwise, it was it, it does not worth waiting for others. Uh, and also the benefits of but the benefits of jobs that are arriving later must be <clears throat> justifying the waiting cost of earlier jobs. So these are some intuitive things that uh, we expect to to hold in all the optimal solutions. Now, once once we have this, we can go and define the game. So what is the game? It's a cooperative game. So we have a set of players and some kind of uh, characteristic function, which gives us the value for each coalition. So we define the game as a saving game, as a gain sharing game. So we have the game would be the set of players that we have n and a function v, which for each subgroup of player gives the optimal, uh, as the, the, up, the, the maximum saving that that group of player can uh, create. And this is again a uh, packing uh, formulation. And what we are looking for is to find an allocation. So we want to know how do we share the cost of the grant coalition, that is V of N, among these N players. And we basically, we say, okay, if we have the N players, we have the value of N, we want to divide it between, uh, between the players and everybody gets AI. That's the allocation to a player. And the vector of uh, all allocations, we, we, we uh, denote with uh, this bold A. That's, that's what we are after. We, we want to find a way to allocate this VN uh, among the players. Um, now the core. Well, I don't even have the definition of the core in this presentation uh, because I assumed uh, you all know what the core is. But basically, the core is the set of allocations where we completely divide the value of V M among the uh, among the n players. So sum of A i uh, is equal to V n, and also we have this condition of stability, which says what we give to every group of player must be as least as much as they can get on their own. So look at this constraint. So this is the sum of the allocate, allocated uh, saving to a group of player in T must be at least as big as the benefit that T can get uh, on its own. So this is not a definition of core here. This is actually the dual problem that we have here. So if we uh, there is a there is a nice uh, relationship between a packing covering partitioning problem, something like this that we have seen here. There is a nice uh, relationship between an optimization problem cast into a partitioning or packing for, uh, structure and the core, because the dual of the uh, relaxation for n, obviously this is not the duo for the actual problem because actual problem has zero one uh, constraint for the variable. So if we can't, we can't uh, formulate the duo for this problem. But if we relax this constraint, and then we can uh, formulate the duo as this, and uh, it, it kind of looks like, you know, something like a core because we have this stability constraint here. And on the top, we have the sum of the savings to our player. And this is, um, this is generally known. So thank et al. They have 1999, they formulate this uh, um, in, in the paper that would say is that if you have a game like this, then the core is not empty if and only if the value of the dual of the relaxation is the same as the value of the original problem. So basically we are looking at the duality gap in this problem. So we have the integer problem and the dual of this relaxation. And we look at the gap between the optimal solution of the two. If there is no gap, it means the core is not empty. If there's any gap, it means the core is empty. So it's very, uh, we're very easy for us to uh, characterize the condition for non emptiness of a core in a, in, a, in, a, in a game like this. So what can we get in terms of results? Well, suppose we have non-restrictive capacities. 
What does that mean? It means that the capacity is not a problem. So either the size of a truck is big compared to the size of the cargo of each players, or there are not so many players that arrive uh, within a framework, within the, within, within the time frame that we want to dispatch a truck. So if each player has one pallet, and usually we expect 10 uh, players to arrive within a day, then it's not really a problem of capacity of a truck. We can put everything in one truck, right? So if, truck, if the capacity is not a problem, then the core is not empty. So if, if the problems are with the capacity, which we get to that later on, but if the capacity of the truck is not a problem, we have no restriction imposed to us from that angle, then the core is not empty. So uh, this is a nice result, but it's uh, probably you want to know how do we get this? Uh, actually, there is a there is an old result in optimization in uh, uh, graph. Uh, actually, optimization over graphs, it's back, date back to 1986. And it says that if you have a tree and you want to do a packing, set packing on this tree, if you can show that you can pack this tree in a way that all the optimal components of this packing are consecutive nodes in that tree so it's a connected so it's a connected set then if you if you can show that you can always uh, optimize the tree using connected subsets then the duality gap would be zero now this is the same result that we can use to solve the uh, classic lot sizing problem so in a lot sizing problem we want to see in what period we produce and for how many periods we produce when we, when, when we do a production run. And the optimal solution is always connected. So if you are producing in time t, you always produce for time t plus 1 plus 2 to something. It's not like that you produce in time t for period t plus 1 and for t plus 2 you produce from, from a different point of time. No, if you are, you always have this connected components in optimal problem, um, optimal solution. So that's that's basically the result we use. So if the capacity is not a problem, the optimal solution to the problem, to the uh, uh, dispatching problem, would be always we're gonna put the trucks with players one, two, three, four in one truck. We wanna put the two trucks, uh, players three, four, five, six, seven in one truck. It never be that we want to put the uh, cargo of player one, two, and four in one truck and three in another truck. If the four is in one truck and two is in one truck, in optimal solution, three is always there. So that's that's what we use. And uh, we, we can find um, ways to find allocations in the core because, you know, if you find, if, if you, it's not, sufficient to say that the core is non-empty because at the end of the day we need to be able to produce an allocation say this is the allocation that we want to use if we say the core is non-empty that's nice but how can we get an allocation in the core well usually you need to solve that dual problem which has two to the power of n minus one constraint so even the, so the, just the formulation of the problem is MP, MP uh, complete. But what we show that in this case, we can use a much faster way, much more, it's a actually polynomial time um, problem to find allocations in the core. So if we uh, use this formulation, well, it's a little bit of uh, details in there, which I'm, I'm going to leave out. Uh, so there's going to be only uh, this many constraints instead of this many constraints. So it's, uh, we can actually find allocations in the core for this uh, game uh, easy, <coughs> relatively. OK, now the last thing I want to talk about is the fact that the capacity is a problem.
right? The truck's capacity is a problem. So the example I showed you initially, we had two half trucks who wanted to uh, con consolidate their cargo into full trucks. And they could not, all three of them could not work together at the same time because you cannot put three half trucks in one truck. So capacity is a problem. <laughs> so in that game that we have here, uh, that in the, in the example like that I just showed you, um, when we impose the restriction of capacity, then the value of the game would be different, right? So in this case, now everything is the same as previous scenarios except the value of the grand coalition N, which is now 21. This used to be 23, but now we can't use one truck. We need to use two trucks. So the cost, the, the gain actually uh, goes down. Now here, the core is empty. How do we know? Well, is, uh, if we're using uh, uh, balancedness condition, you can see that if we sum up the value of this three would be more than the twice of this value. Now, this is a, this is a bit of a uh, trick to see if the core is not empty, but uh, you can believe me, the core is empty in this case. Um, so what, what do we do? We can't say to the consolidation centers, okay, sorry guys, we are out of here. The court is empty, uh, we have nothing more to say, so bye-bye. We have to come up with something, right? And there is, a, in, in the cooperative game literature, there are ways to do this. Like we have allocation rules like least core and nucleolus, which deal with this situation. But it's not always that straightforward to understand and communicate. So if you want to explain, just imagine if you want to explain how the nucleolus works to truck drivers, logistical companies. I mean, if I want to, if, if you want to explain nucleolus to me, I have to do a lot of, you know, to sort of flinch my face. That it's, it's not something that's straightforward that everybody can understand. And there is other reasons as well. So if they are people working together to do consolidation, one of the things that may pose as a, problem is to, for them to say that we, we reduce how much you gain you get because some of the previous trucks that dispatched morning in the morning today, well, they have an influence on, on how much you get. In some practical situation, we want to focus the attention on what a player can see within its own coalition. So I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. So there are opportunities to come up with new interpretations or new uh, modifications of the notion of a stability, which works better in practice. And that's uh, basically uh, what I uh, what we call a component-wise code. So what do we mean by component? So remember that if we have a optimal solution for the dispatching problem, we had trucks who are dispatched in groups together. So player one, two, and four are within one uh, truck dispatched. Uh, some other tr trucks, some other uh, players are in another truck. So they are practically separated from each other. So if we have this separation among them, why can't we just look at their own coalitions and try to justify how much they gain by looking at that small coalition instead of looking at all combinations of players in all sub coalitions and that's basically what, what we do we want to impose the restriction impose the uh, logic of core instead of for all players for sub coalitions within the dispatches so that's what we do so we we say an allocation is in a component-wise core. We define the components by core by saying that we want this stability to hold only for sub-coalitions of a dispatch. So here T is a component of an optimal uh, of an optimal dispatch. So we have like player one, two, three, four in one dispatch, and we only want to make sure that we allocate the gains in a way that player one, two, three, four, none of them can object to this allocation by looking at what else they can do together. So one player one, two, and three, 
player two, three, four, these, this kind of combination. So you don't allow a player one, two, make an objection to the allocation with a player five, which would be another dispatch. So if we do these restrictions, because the core is empty, right? So we need to do work with something that is doable. And once we do this relaxation, if we relax the requirements for stability uh, for all players and focus it on the components, then we can show that uh, the, every DC game with restrictive capacity has a non-empty component-wise core. And uh, what we can do in the in the in the last step is to characterize the uh, component-wise core using some properties we can see uh, in this in this problem, which is actually derived from the properties of optimal solution, which I showed you. But for the sake of time, I'm gonna leave that out. So if you're interested, you can look at the paper or I can explain to you uh, later if you want me to. And uh, yeah, so we characterize the component wise and we give a formulation for finding a location in the component wise core. Again, using uh, a set of uh, uh, constraints that, that gives us um, allocations in the component wise core always. Um, so we have a procedure for finding the uh, component wise allocations in component wise core. Um, we have some additional pro properties in the paper uh, which are uh, satisfied with the component wise core and regarding the objections, which I, 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 I did not discuss here. So there we can, the, the allocation rule that we propose has some other merits. Uh, but uh, there is a lot of uh, room for future research. So we are looking at a problem from a static point of view, right? So the time is fixed, uh, but in the, in, in, in the real life, in the real problem, we have a dynamic problem. So when we don't know exactly when players arrive to the consolidation center. So we have to determine when to dispatch a truck without knowing if within the next couple of hours, another truck comes in or not. And, if we incorporate that in the problem, uh, both the optimization problem and the gain sharing problem uh, would be very different and requires uh, a lot of more thinking to, to, to solve. But um, that was the main thing that I wanted to discuss. And I thank you for your attention. And finally, we have uh, some questions. <laughs> which, which I actually thought about those things, and um, in terms of the super additivity, it's all it's there because when we formulate the problem as a partitioning or set packing, then we look at uh, one coalition, another coalition, and the optimal always would be whatever is the best for these two. If it's better for them to join, then we have to join. In the, mm -hmm. in the solution. If it's better to have them separate, the optimal solution keep them separate. So we have the super addi additivity always there. In terms of convexity, uh, it's not it's it's not convex. Even in in the case of uh, without any capacity restriction, it's not convex. And uh, I think in the paper we have examples which. Actually, we show with three players that the uh, game is not convex because uh, if we had convexity, then it would have been uh, much easier, as you mentioned. So we, we could have Shapley. But to some extent, the problem looks like the uh, cooperative lot sizing game. So cooperative lot sizing games are also not in general uh, convex. No. Yeah. Yeah. And um... I mean, about this uh, <laughs> idea of uh, looking at the core with a dual problem, I mean, I think you know that uh, Owen, in some paper of, uh, I mean, studied uh, some um, problems, production linear problem with this idea. And what we get is uh, the Owen set. I mean, the Owen set is the set of all shadows tries, or what is the uh, optimal solution of the dual problem. 
And in that case, if you have an integer problem, I mean, if you had a, um, uh, this an integer problem, it means that the rel linear relaxation coincides with the solution of the integer. I mean, you can talk about the, and it's nice because it has some relation with that. And yeah, it was good. I mean, I like this uh, model and, and the paper. And it, I mean, it's intuitive that if you have no restriction on the capacity, things should be easier than if you have restriction because the more restriction we have, the less is the set of uh, the feasible set and the set of possibilities. So yeah, I like it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, that uh, uh, the duality is, I think, it's very well hidden in almost uh, all results on game theory. So uh, cooperative game theory, we always have something to do with the dual. Even the balance, the balanceness condition is basically a duality yeah. condition, and the yeah, other. Sure. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, something that uh, I think we really bank on in a cooperative game. Uh, and yeah, there it's, it's the matter of, you know, trying to, to working with dual is nice, but the problem is that find the actual allocations in the core using the dual is very inefficient. So you have to have all this, uh, all the sub coalitions. So dual helps for the existence but not much in terms of finding the allocation so that's i think the the problem we we can face sometimes yeah okay any other question and if anyone wants to put a question okay well, thank you everybody for the, uh, attending to the, to the seminar and thank you you all <laughs>